I decided to record another chapter today. So uh, this is chapter four, Dirty Business. Ow, oh, flash it down the bog, shouted Sheila. Zoe was sitting on her bed, listening through the wall to her dad and her stepmother arguing. No, replied dad. I'll give it here, you useless git. I'll bang it in the bin. Zoe often sat on her bed in her two small pyjamas, listening through the paper-thin wall to her father and her stepmother arguing way past her bedtime. Tonight, they were of course shouting and screaming about Ginger Nut, who had died that day. As they lived in a flat on the 37th floor of a dilapidated council block, which leaned heavily and should have been demolished decades ago, the family didn't have a garden. There was an old adventure playground in the central concrete square shared by all the blocks in the estate. However, the local gang made it too dangerous to venture near. What are you looking at? Tina Trotz would shout at anyone passing by. Tina was the local bully and her gang of teenage hoodlums ruled the estate. She was only 14, but she could make a grown man cry and often did. Every day she would flop on Zoe's head from the flats as the little girl walked to school. And every day Tina would laugh as if it was the funniest thing in the world. If the family had owned an allotment or even a small patch of grass anywhere on the estate they could call their own, Zoe would have dug a little grave with a spoon, lowered her little friend into the hole and made a headstone with a lolly stick. Ginger nut, much loved hamster, expert breakdancer and sometimes body popper Sadly missed by his owner and friend, Zoe. R.I.P. Squared. But of course, they didn't have a garden. No one did. Instead, Zoe had wrapped her hamster carefully in a page from her history exercise book. When her dad finally returned home from the pub, Zoe gave him the precious little package. Well, my dad will know what to do with him, she thought. But Zoe hadn't reckoned on her horrible stepmother getting involved. Unlike his new wife, Dad was tall and thin. If she was a bowling ball, he was the skittle. And of course, bowling balls often got knocked over by skittles. So now Dad and Sheila were arguing in the kitchen about what to do with the little package Zoe had given to Dad. It was always awful hearing the two of them shouting at each other, but tonight was proving particularly unbearable. Well, I suppose I could get the poor girl another hamster, ventured Dad. She was so good with it. Zoe's face lit up at that moment. Oh, are you crazy? sneered her stepmother. Another hamster? Oh, you are so useless. You can't even get a job to pay for one. Oh, and there are no jobs, pleaded Dad. Oh, you're just too lazy to get one. You useless git. Oh, I could find a way for Zoe. Oh, I love my girl so much. I could try to save some of my benefit money. Oh, that's hardly enough to keep me in prawn cocktail crisps, let alone feed a beast like that. Oh, uh, we could feed it leftovers, protested Dad. Oh, I'm not having another one of those disgusting creatures in my flat, said the woman. Uh, it's not a disgusting creature, it's a hamster. Oh, hamsters are no better than rats, Sheila continued. Worse, I work all day on me hands and knees, keeping this flat spick and span. She does no such thing, thought Zoe. The flat is an absolute tip. And then the nasty little thing comes along and does its dirty business everywhere, continued Sheila. And while I'm on the subject, your aim in the bog could be better. Oh, sorry. What do you do? Put a sprinkle on the end of it? Uh, uh, keep your voice down, woman. Little, the little girl was once again finding out the hard way that secretly listening to your parents talk could be a very dangerous game. You always ended up hearing things you wish you had never had. Besides, Ginger Nut didn't do his dirty business everywhere. Zoe always made sure she picked up any rogue droppings from his secret runs around her room with some loo paper and flushed them safely down the toilet. I'll take the cake down the pawn shop then, said Dad. Oh, I might get a few quid for it. Oh, I will take it down the pawn shop, said his wife ag aggressively. You'll just spend the money down the pub. Uh, uh, but... No, 
Now, pretty nasty little thing in the bin. Oh, I promised I, uh, Zoe I would give him a proper burial in the park. She loved Ginger Nut, taught him, taught him tricks and everything. Oh, they were pathetic, pathetic. A break dancing hamster, absolute rubbish. Oh, oh, that's not fair. And you're not going out again tonight. I don't trust you. You'll be back down the pub. Uh, uh, shut now. Oh, knowing you, you'll just wait outside until it opens tomorrow morning. Now come on, give it here. Zoe heard the pedal bin open with the stamp of her stepmother's chubby foot and the faint sound of a thud. With tears streaming down, streaming down her face, Zoe lay down in bed and covered herself with a duvet. She turned to the right. In the half-light, she stared at the cage as she did every night. It was agonising to see it empty. The little girl closed her eyes but couldn't sleep. Her heart was aching. Her brain was spinning. She was sad. She was angry. She was sad. She was angry. She was sad. She turned to, onto her left side. Maybe it would be easier to sleep facing the grimy wall rather than staring at an empty cage. She closed her eyes again but all she could think about was Ginger Nut. Not that it was easy to think, what with the noise coming from the neighbouring flat. Zoe didn't know who lived there. People in the tower block weren't exactly close, but most evenings she heard shouting. It seemed like a man screaming at his daughter who would often cry, and Zoe felt sorry for her, whoever she was. However bad Zoe thought her life was, the girls sounded worse. But Zoe blocked out the shouting and soon fell asleep, dreaming of ginger nut, breakdancing in heaven. Okay, that's it for today. Have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow.